we're in the leafy suburb of Camaray, just a few k's north of Sydney CBD. And from the street, you'd never guess that an award-winning garden sits just above this flat garage. This is Cascade Garden. It was completed in 2021 and the steep local sandstone site is split into tranquil garden spaces with a boardwalk style path in the centre. It's filled with carefully selected plants to suit its many microclimates. And at this time of year, the bold textures and forms are real show-offs. Unsure what could be achieved in this small space, the size of two adjacent double garages, the owners turned to garden designers Barbara Landsberg and Cherith Piper. What was your brief for the site, Barbara? It started out as repairing the stairs and making the journey from the house, which is high above the street, to the garage much easier. So it was more about that journey and a little bit of garden improvement, if possible. <laughs> So it fell to Barbara and Cherith to create that easy path, but they came up with so much more. They were interested in native plants, so there was that idea of bringing nature in. Mm -hmm. And then there were, you know, hints that they liked the idea of water. She likes yoga, so we gifted her the yoga deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the water yeah. feature. <laughs> and citrus and herbs, but they were also unsure whether that could be achieved. And what challenges did you face with the site? How did you navigate all that? The challenges were, yes, fixing the stairs, and that was our first technical problem. And the second one was, this is a garage roof. So we have very little soil depth. And there are also load restrictions on rooftops. So we needed to know those things and, and work within that parameter. To keep our wild ideas in check. <laughs> but still this was possible. And what did this look like before? There was nothing, actually. And desolate lawn. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's a great description. Desolate lawn. <laughs> and the stairwell, obviously, coming up. Some brutally clipped hedges. That was it. So what was your key focus for the garden? We didn't begin with the focus. One evolved, and we often start with a concept. And the idea of the Cascade Garden was to really emphasise this connection from high to low and how we would flow through the site. And it was this idea of coming off the stairs and creating a pooling space, somewhere that, you know, you would gather and spend time in. The Cascade the Garden, it helped us find the shapes of the garden. Yeah. Um, it helped us also find the rhythm of the garden. Mm. Taylor made core 10 steel balustrades intentionally hold you in the space. And there's a feeling of moving in and out, of being enclosed, but then the space opens up again. In a small space, core 10 is incredibly useful because it's such a thin and strong material. So in terms of the screens, they act as this dramatic entrance. But the design on them was yeah. very much to do with the cascade as well. Yeah. So taking this idea of spilling water and, and, and bubbling, cascading water, and also thinking about the location near the coast. And so that's the patterning that we um, sort of moved into the screens. And it's been a beautiful surprise to watch how the light plays with it as well and, and um, the shadows track. There has to be some fun and joy and unexpectedness in every garden. Once the pair had figured out the levels of the path, the garden was divided into zones based on the multiple microclimates created by shading and soil depth. The largest section of planting is on the garage roof. Here, the soil is very shallow, so they had to be careful not to overload the building structure. It's a difficult site because yeah. it's north facing, so it is beaten by the sun mm. and it's windy. So the plants had to be drought tolerant and very good Australian environment plants, dry climate plants. And dry climate plants tend to have more superficial, shallower roots. These sandstone boulders tie beautifully into the landscape and the raised court and steel beds add extra depth and also house a citrus and thriving herb patch. An upper deck overshadows part of this area, creating a shady pocket. 
there's this giant void under the stairs. What did you do here to <laughs> work through that? Well, from the before photos, you'll see there were sort of sandstone blocks all stacked up like teeth. And we decided to use the core 10 and, and cut it into the rock so it highlighted the line of the rock shelf. And that's the pocket of soil that then gives us this opportunity to plant out. And it was really different planting to the rest of the garden. It's shady under there and far more protected. And so many of the plants in this exposed part of the garden wouldn't survive. So that required the right plants for shade and much more subtropical showier plants. And luckily, the plants that love the shade are generally um, of a larger format, more architectural in their leaf form. Mm -hmm. So we've chosen raphis and xanadus and Roger Congos and they create their own show. <laughs> <laughs> and they are really thriving in that yeah. space. Yeah. And I can see like you've gone for really big sort of bold plants and not lots of little tidbits. Mm -hmm. What was the reason for that? If you have a plant or you know a plant will thrive in your space, mm -hmm. don't just plant one. If it's got a small leaf and a smaller flower, plant many and make mm. a great show of them and have them at several points through the garden that not only do they draw the eye through and provide a rhythm, but together actually create a grand show. Australian natives, like the Grevillea and Gaimelili in particular, are holding their own. They're evergreen and add gorgeous texture to the garden. In a small garden, people often you know, steer away from planting large trees for the fear it's going to overwhelm the space. How have you managed to incorporate them into the garden? You don't need big trees, mm. but there are many beautiful small trees. Trees are important to provide overhead canopy. They provide screening where they're needed. They're a habitat for wildlife. They allow dimension in a garden because you don't want everything down at your feet, so you're always looking down. You want also things that allow you to lift your head and overhead, which allows the garden to come fully around you. We had to rescale the balcony that's kind of, it was looming. <laughs> and so these trees on, on this side it's, are especially really important in helping hold you in the garden and to stop that feeling like a two-storey house. And to yeah. raise the garden yeah. to the terrace yeah, above and to absolutely. the front door area so that it wasn't just an experience mm. when you're down here. Mm. And what else can homeowners do to enhance their small space garden? So not only should they look at what's within their garden space to work with, but what's beyond it. And it's what we call a borrowed landscape. And for here, there was wonderful screening on the neighbour's property that we could take advantage of. And also uh, understanding that once you sit down in this space, you're actually tucked away behind the fence and you can't see the rooftops anymore and you just have a sense of treetops surrounding you. So that space beyond the garden becomes really important. And the owners are thrilled with the result. Now, they live in it every day and they use it every day and for us, that is a joy. And it surprised them how much the garden now plays a part in their lives.